mentioned you talked about the, the Medicaid expansion, that pretty forceful yeah. rejection of that. Um, what is, is that, is that dead now? I mean, uh, obviously the Senate acted as well in, in the same way. Yeah, I mean, I don't see the Florida House or the Senate expanding Medicaid as we know it. Uh, here we are going into our third week of the session, and now the conversation is about how do we provide more care for Floridians uh, through private and free market you know, alternatives as opposed to growing a government entitlement like Medicaid that's already got a major problem. So I'm, I'm very happy with where we are. I do not foresee an expansion of Medicaid in the Florida House, and that's a good thing. It, it, has Governor Scott reached out to you at all? I mean, what, what is his... You know, I haven't heard much. I mean, he obviously made it very known that he was in favor of it. Uh, we obviously respect his opinion, but we disagree on this issue. And, uh, but there's a lot of things that we do agree on, and so we're trying to focus with him more on those things and not so much on the Medicaid issue. Do you think that's going to hurt him in, in 2014 as he seeks re-election? I, don't, I have no clue, you know, how anything hurts anything. Uh, you know, I think the governor's doing a good job. I think the Florida's you know, moving in a good direction. I'm very happy with the unemployment numbers and where they're going and the trends that we're seeing. Uh, but there's still a lot of work to be done, so I'm excited about what but the some of the, is in us. some of the Tea Party members are, are pretty upset with him, and that was that helped, you know, put him in office. Well, they may be, but that's kind of between him and them. So, you know, we have to, uh, you know, stick by the things that we're focused on, and he's got to do what he's got to do as the governor, and we're going to work together to hopefully have a good session. People have mentioned you as a possible primary challenger to him for governor. What do you, what do you say to that? I am very happy being Speaker of the House and looking forward to spending time with my four-year-old, my two-year-old, and my newborn. So, uh, I, I, as I've joked before, I don't think people who say that probably know me very well. What about 2014? Do you eye any congressional seats in your district? I'm not running for anything. You know, I don't see myself being on a ballot in 2014. I, I really love this experience in the legislature. I want to be a good speaker, and I'm laser-focused on being a good speaker. And, focusing on the issues that we care about, like pension reform and campaign finance and education reform and not expanding Medicaid and things like that. And so we'll get through the session and uh, see where that takes us. But uh, I do not anticipate being on any ballots anytime soon. Or 2016? Well, you never know. You never say never. I've learned that. What was the, you used the phrase uh, cartel. What, what was about, about Washington? Uh, well, there's this, on that. well, there's, I mean, there's this, this thought. There's this group of people in Washington this, I call it, you know, it's a, it's a group think almost, where they believe that, you know, if we just create bigger government programs and get people more health care through that, that that somehow is going to, you know, solve our problems. And um, I don't believe that's true. I think that, you know, embracing free markets and liberating people to make decisions for themselves is what's going to create prosperity. It's what's created prosperity in this country so far. Um, so there's just a very strong divergence in where the Democratic Party seems to want to take us and where we're taking us as Republicans. And, you know, our party's got to do a better job of articulating our vision. I think a lot of what you saw tonight, some of the upcoming leaders, uh, there's some very impressive people up there on that stage, and I think you're going to hear a lot more about them as the years come on. What did you What did you make of what Jeb Bush said? He said that it basically said the party's got to do some things different. It has can't be the anti everything party. What did What do you What do you make of his well, speech? I think, I think what we're finding out is what he said was you can't be the anti immigration, the anti gay, uh, you know, the anti youth, uh, you know party. And I don't think we are. And I think a good example of that is yesterday, Senator Rob Portman, who's a stalwart within the conservative circles of our party, came out in favor of gay marriage. You know, the day before that, I watched Marco Rubio's speech right here at CPAC talk about that he thinks gay marriage should be left up to the states. And to him, he traditionally thinks it should be a man and a woman. Now, those are two great guys, both serving in the United States Senate, both Republicans, both conservatives, that have different views on something. But what that shows is that our tent is big, and that our party is growing, and that more people can be a part of our party, even if they disagree on some issues. What's your view on that on that question? Well, I, I agree with Senator Rubio. I think that I believe that you know, gay marriage, uh, is a, the idea of gay marriage, and uh, is something that is changing a tradition that's been around for thousands of years. And here we are in the 21st century. I'm not trying to redefine anything for anybody. Uh, but that being said, I live in a state that passed a constitutional amendment. There's a case before the Supreme Court. We'll see what they say. Um, but my personal views is uh, I'm, I'm in favor of traditional marriage. Could you openly support an openly gay? Uh, candidate for Congress, Senate. Of course, of course I could. We have some openly gay members of the Florida House. They're doing a great job. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't support somebody. Like I said, someone doesn't have to agree with you ten out of ten times. If they agree with you nine out of ten times. It's pretty good in my book. What else can we expect out of the Florida uh, Senate or uh, the House, the whole uh, legislature this time around, aside from the pension reform? A lot of work. You're going to see us pass an internet cafe ban next week. Uh, you're going to see us focus on things like Everglades restoration. You're going to see us focus on things like pension reform, campaign finance reform, ethics reform. Um, there's going to be a lot of work done here in the next seven weeks. And we're working very closely with Don Gates, who's been a great partner. And um, I think it's going to be a good session. How much of a distraction is the Carroll issue? Um, and, and who do you think uh, might be 
the replacement? Well, I have no idea who he'll pick, and we'll leave that up to the governor. I'm sure it'll be someone who's very qualified. Uh, that was a sad day. Jennifer is a friend. Uh, I feel sorry for her with what's taking place. Um, we wish her the best. We're praying for her, but I think she made the right decision to step down. But, you know, I don't think it's going to be a distraction for our session at all. So you don't anticipate this um, having any effect on the legislature's business? I do not. I think we're charging ahead. With the Medicaid expansion, I know you've addressed this before, but explain the critics have said it's inconsistent for you to reject it when your family benefited. Well, explain. A couple, there's a couple of things. One is we, as a state, provide health care to children with 200% of the poverty rate. We provide health care for people who have a disability. The, the idea of Medicaid expansion predominantly helps able-bodied, single adults, okay? most of them childless. And so you know, the question is, are those the people that we should be spending billions and billions of dollars on to provide insurance for? Uh, I am all for a safety net. My fa family, as I've stated before, benefited from a safety net. He was a child. He would still, you know, if, if my brother were alive today and had a similar issue, he would be covered because he would be a good age. But to do a massive entitlement expansion, have the federal government only pay for it for a few years and not know where the money's going to come from after that, it could affect our tax system by raising taxes. It could affect our education system by taking money from education. And I just think we need to think that through before we jump in the pool of a big massive uh, Medicaid expansion. If it's if it's as dangerous as it is, why are why are the uh, a number of Republican governors ex accepting it? I don't know. It's a good question. We'd have to ask them. But it didn't seem like it was a good idea to them six months ago. I don't know why they think it's a good idea now. And and. Um, how realistic is it that the state of Florida can come up with some alternative? And I mean, that, that's yeah. a complicated process. I mean, how could it you? Is. There's some innovative ideas that are being thrown around. But I think what's good is we have seven weeks to talk about alternatives. We have seven weeks to talk about who are we really trying to help in Florida. What should the safety net truly consist of? And I think spending billions of dollars on single, able-bodied adults, uh, not knowing how you're going to pay for it long term, is not good for our state. And speaking to a lot of Democrats uh, around the state. They seem weary on who they're going to put up against Governor Rick Scott. They, the, the name Charlie Chris has been thrown around. They're not too fond of him, but they think that they're, the, the consensus they'll settle with him. But do you see anyone outside of Charlie Chris giving Governor Scott a run in 2014? I'm not, I'm not very good at making predictions in Democratic primaries, but here's what I'll say about Governor Chris. Uh, I think Governor Chris is going to have to find an answer for this question. If he wants to be governor so bad again, if he wants to come back to the state of Florida and lead our state, why did he leave us when we had a 12% unemployment rate and the state of Florida was having its hardest times? When the state of Florida really needed a leader to step up and be there for them, why did he choose to leave? And I think he has to answer that question. And frankly, I don't know how he's going to answer it. Uh, he wants to come back now that things are good. Where was he when things were really bad? He's going to have to answer that. He's going to say, we just launched your gubernatorial campaign? No. 2016? No. I love being speaker. Thank you, guys.